Hi, my name is John Jarvis. I'm with Good Shepherd Ministries. Talk to you a little bit about um, my addiction, which is alcohol. And um, I'll keep it short. Uh, basically, I always drank beer. was good at it. Uh, <clears throat> it was controlled drinking. I learned to drink in the Navy. That's where I started smoking. I've never did anything but alcohol, and 99% of the time it was beer, an occasional shot of Jack Daniels or Jim Beam, something like that. Nothing else. Um, I maintained what I've learned is uh, I managed the drinking. I never missed work, got my promotions. And then I would say probably uh, 12 months ago maybe, 14 I caught the the second wave of the COVID <clears throat> the one that gave you real bad headaches <clears throat> and uh, took away my taste buds as I knew them and um, I happened to pop a top on my favorite beer and I took one drink out of it and it was the worst thing I ever tasted this is kind of where I knew I had a problem I said, what am I going to do now? I need to, I need to get the evening buzz. So the gal I was living with said, well, here, try that vodka. And I thought vodka was the nastiest thing imaginable. So I wound up uh, putting Gatorade in it, uh, probably two shots and then eight shots of Gatorade. Well, this is pretty good. Little did I know as each day went, I drank more and more of it and the bottom line is that vodka just took a hold of me like I could control the beer drinking and I always did I was always in bed by nine o'clock at night regardless if I drank two six five whatever but this vodka did something to me that I, I still can't explain it but it it took over and so it got to the point, I wasn't missing work at that point, but I was wanting to get home early. And so I would cancel customers and put them off. And it's something I never did. And the bottom line is it, it got worse. I started coming in late, but I was there. And then it finally happened I'd always wonder how, how can somebody take a drink in the morning? Because I just didn't believe in it and it happened to me. I'll just say the last three weeks before I went down, <clears throat> it got worse and worse and there was four days I called in sick, which had never happened. And they kind of blew it off. Okay, well, you know, you're sick. They didn't think anything about it. I I hadn't eaten in eight days. It was getting close to December. We were shut down. I was still getting a check for another two weeks. <clears throat> I was at that point drinking, eating very little, and I went eight days without drink or without eating. And all I wanted to do was drink and then I'd pass out and I'd wake up and the bottle was right there and I was drinking a little bit straight now. And this went on <clears throat> December, December 28th is when I started to have really bad stomach pain. I thought it was because I wasn't eating but I was half drunk. My girlfriend was having to take me to the bathroom. I was having problems seeing, my vision was off. Quite honestly, I just didn't care at that point. I felt backed into a corner because I had said to myself for, for a week probably, okay, tomorrow we won't drink. Well, of course, I'm inside my head and that's the alcohol, you know. Next day, well, I won't drink tomorrow. So, the bottom line is if I hadn't had the pain finally on January 1st, 
2023, I told my girlfriend I can't take this pain anymore. It's been going on for three days. So they took me to the hospital, and that's where I found out my pancreas had swollen up and I had seepage, which was causing the problem. And then a few days later, I found out, you know, that my liver was about 60% gone. And they did all this test, all these tests. The third day, the doctor came in and said, asked me my history and that, drinking and that. And he goes, well, you know, you're an alcoholic. I knew in my heart I was, but to hear somebody say that to me, it was like, whoa, no, no, no. He said, uh, I can get you into a place. Now, I'm from Cincinnati, Harrison, actually, Ohio. And I can get you into a place. Okay. I thought, all right, I'll try it. Thinking it was some kind of a 30-day program or something. So I went to Woodhaven. I was in the hospital nine days, then I went to Woodhaven, um, it's a recovery place. Uh, it was a 90 day program, I thought, okay. Um, I had never been in rehab, the only thing I knew about AA was they like to drink coffee. That's all I knew about it. When I first got there, they started talking, you know, about my situation i was in detox first for eight days really things didn't happen i did not believe that i was an alcoholic didn't i didn't want to that's the bottom line i knew god all my life it was me that turned my back i wanted to have my fun i wanted to drink beer i was not a partier i was not one to go hit the bars i never drank and drove i never had a ticket so I'm sitting there listening to these other stories and I'm thinking, what am I doing here, <laughs> you know? But the bottom line is I am an alcoholic. I got, you know, I went through the 90 days and as each week went by, I got uh, stronger and started realizing more and more by having flashbacks into my past of things that I did that were alcohol related even though I didn't get in trouble or anything my sons thought I was nuts thinking I was an alcoholic but they did not know I could go grill out and everything if you know the whole family or or go to a ball game and drink one or two beers but when I got home I you can be assured I was going to hit five or six but see that's the closet drinking and everything so of course nobody knew that stuff and to this day, there's still some people that are skeptical whether or not I'm, a, you know, an alcoholic. But I can assure you I am. And anyway, it was time to graduate from there. I firmly believe I started seeing things to where God hadn't turned away from me. It was me who turned away from him. But he still loved me. And I thought, okay, we're going to follow this route. After all, 42 years of drinking, it, you know, it didn't work, so. I get offered two or three places um, for, uh, what is it, sober living. I chose Good Shepherd because by then I had a uh, sponsor, an outside sponsor. And he was very familiar with Good Shepherd and thought I'd be a good fit. Well, some people who had been in rehab before said, you don't want to go there, man. All they do is work. Well, let's just put it this way. God, God directed me to Good Shepherd. I firmly believe that because that's where I belong. That's where I am. The first couple weeks was like my world was tossed upside down. Yeah, we worked and it was meetings and everything. And one day, uh, the director said to me maybe you don't belong here because i was battling it every step of the way and i took to heart we had a conversation i gradually started changing my way of thinking and seeing other guys especially on alumni every thursday night and guys coming back and they're successful yeah they had their hard days just like anybody else in life but 
they're happy. That was the biggest thing for me. And I've been there four months and uh, four months and ten days now. I'm comfortable. I'm still learning. I love certain AA meetings. I learn. I've learned how to trust people. I've learned how to speak. You know, um, a trust, trust, and and talking were two things I just didn't do in my life. And so, I really had a breakthrough recently by letting a lot go. And I would highly recommend Good Shepherd to anyone. It's for me. I belong here. I'm accepted. And that's the big thing. And I'm growing. I've learned so much here, plus the AA meetings I go to and church. Um, church has been a big part of it for me. And, you know, I'm in step 11 now, but I'm a human being, so I still have trouble turning it all over to God. You know, it's like, well, what's wrong with you? He created everything. He, he can surely take care of you. I think that's just the human being in me, but I strive for that. And like I said, I'm learning, but I'm happy. I'm happy and growing. And... I never thought I was an alcoholic. It took me, it took me to hit my knees where if that pain hadn't happened, who knows, two, three weeks, I could have been dead. I'm 62 years old, but I can tell you, particularly in the last couple months, I'm learning how to live. I'm enjoying simple things. I, my taste buds actually are coming back way better than before. I can actually taste things. It's nice to sit down and eat, that type of thing. And I've gone to four ball games. I went to Chicago recently. I'm a big baseball fan. I got to go to Wrigley Field. And, I mean, just, just good things are happening. Sure, you have your crappy days, but in the end, I go to bed at night sober. In the morning, I'm not hung over. Sometimes, yeah, I want to drink. No question about it. But I know I'm not going to. I don't want to be that guy that I was January 1st. And when I first looked at my intake picture from Woodhaven, I did not even recognize me, you know. And I'm just, I'm just thankful for each step. Uh, Woodhaven was great, you know. Um, and here is just excellent. So I'm happy now and growing. That's that's all I can say.